welcome to God's house this evening. It's wonderful to be back with you again. Thank you very much for everyone who gave thoughts and prayers uh, over the last few days until I got back up on my feet again. Uh, our theme for tonight, we're continuing that return to the Lord theme that we've been uh, kind of stressing throughout all of our Latin services. Uh, the theme for this evening is return from the denial. So not only St. Peter's denial, certainly in the courtyard on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, but also the various ways in which we uh, deny our Lord. And so uh, kind of listen for that as we go through our service this evening. Uh, there is no opening hymn, but I do invite you to stand as we sing our opening verses. Hymn for this evening is hymn 880. 
Isaiah, the 59th chapter. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, or his ear dull, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue mutters wickedness. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities. Transgressing and denying the Lord, and turning back from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart lying words. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We sing him 422.
He needed these people to quit interrupting his concentration. He was trying to hear what was happening to Jesus. I have not, he said. The young man seemed to take that at face value and walked away. Although Peter noticed him a little later, whispering to a group of men off in the corner of the courtyard. Still his eyes were riveted on Jesus and the proceedings inside. Time passed. It was late at night or maybe even early in the morning. Peter had lost track of time. He couldn't tell what was happening, but it didn't seem good. There was a lot of yelling. The high priest had been carrying on for a while and was obviously agitated. And that's when it happened. From across the courtyard, the voice rang out. As soon as the man began speaking, Peter knew it was about him. He was standing and pointing at Peter. I'm telling you, this guy is with me. I heard him talking earlier, and he is definitely from Galilee. His accent gives him away. All eyes turned to Peter. He wasn't sure how to react or what to say. What if they realized he really was with Jesus? Would they arrest him too? He didn't know, and he certainly didn't want to find out. He figured if he responded aggressively, maybe they would stop saying it. Man, I do not know what you are talking about. He spits each word out in turn, hoping that the guy would just back down. The courtyard grew quiet. And that's when Peter heard the rooster crow in the distance. Peter glared at his accuser for a moment, then turned to see what was going on inside. And it was like Jesus knew what was happening outside even though he was up to his neck with the council. Slowly he turned and made eye contact with Peter. His eyes were sad, accusing. And Peter remembered what he had said about him denying him three times before the rooster crowed. Tears welled up in Peter's eyes as he pushed through the crowd. He had to get out of that place. He couldn't face Jesus after what he had just done. He was embarrassed, lost. What did this all mean? How often do you do the same thing? How often do you fail to acknowledge your faith in public because you're scared of how people will react? How often do you join in the crowd in mocking another believer because you don't want to seem different? How often do you deny the one who died for your sins without even realizing that you have done it? But when you see it, when you realize it, the guilt can be overwhelming. It may be hard to even step into the church knowing what a hypocrite you have been. Can a wretch like me even be saved? The answer, my dear brothers and sisters, is simple. Yes. After his resurrection, Jesus confronted Peter and his denial. He did it in the form of a question asked three times. Do you love me? And Peter responded affirmatively every time. Then you've got work to do, our Lord told Peter. Tend my flock, feed my sheep, build them up. See, Jesus had already dealt with the denial. Jesus took Peter's denial and yours and mine to the cross, along with all the sins that any of us have committed. Do we love him? And because we love him, we too have work to do. We too must share this good news to tell other people about it. Don't shrink from claiming your Lord and Savior in public. He has called you to return from your denial because he is gracious and merciful, because he is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, because he relents over disaster. My friends, your salvation is done. You are a forgiven child of God, because just as Jesus said, it is finished. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise.
Lord God, your gospel word supports us through both good times and bad. Forgive us for the times when our words deny you. Restore us so that through the words we speak, so that the words we speak bless both you and the people entrusted to our care. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us go in peace and serve.